Dave. <laughs> oh man. That definitely is a song. Yeah, it is. Look. What? Look what's in front of us. What? The the oyster that is uh, the world? Yes, exactly. Because nope. the world is our oyster. The microphone. Oh, yeah. I didn't see that. You know what that means? <laughs> yeah, that means it's time for another episode of American Brews and Tunes. My name is Stephen Johnston. And my name is Jesse Titus. Here's a theme song. You know it's not a mean song. It's a good song, just as it should song, American Brews and Tunes. Shibbity-beeby-dow! Wow, what a great theme song, wouldn't you say? Oh, is there a better theme song? No. I don't think so. Let me think, actually, if there is a better one. There probably is. Is that the Scrubs has a pretty good theme song. Yeah, that's true. I'm no Superman. That's a good song, yeah. The Office is pretty good. Maybe just those two. <laughs> Just those two. That's it. We're third best in the world. I don't know. Theme song. CSI Crime Scene Investigation is pretty good. Oh, gosh. Won't get fooled again. Oh, no, no, no. It's Who Are You? Who? Who? Who are you? Who? 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 <laughs> it makes so much sense because they're trying to find they're someone. They're trying to find who somebody is, yeah. yeah. I'm not talking about CSI Miami or CSI New York. You're just talking about the normal, the regular, yeah, first With Gil Grissom. Looks like we have... A um, crime on our hands. Who are you? Who, who, is that what he who? said every time? No, he always like, there's <laughs> bugs on the body, and I can calculate how long this body's been here because of the bugs. Who are you? <laughs> is that how they would like... Uh, it, there was something goofy like that's that. How they would, what's the word for it uh, whenever you like end a scene? I, segway? No, it's a different... It's like, th- it's not... Uh, something with thumb. Um, how you, they would... Who knows what you're trying to it's say. It's how you like... Uh, I can't remember what the, the phrase is, but there's a phrase for like how you end a scene. And is that how they do every how they end every single scene? No, just the beginning. And that's how I can tell how long this body has been dead. Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> but CSI Miami, that's the one with Horatio, the red-haired guy, where he yeah. would, he had his glasses and he would always tilt them down, saying, "It's like looks like we have," and they tilt his glasses. A murder on our hands. Yep. And then they would start whatever other theme song was on. Or there. you would say, "Looks like he was in." The wrong part of town. Jesse took off his glasses right before saying the wrong part of town. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For all of you who can't see, which is all of you. <laughs> Anyways. That really wouldn't make much sense. Uh, enough gressing. Uh, welcome to American Brews and Tunes. This is our 19th episode. Can you believe it, Jesse? I can believe it. Well, I suppose I can believe it, too, because I've been here for all 18 of them. And you better believe it. I'm going to stick around for 19. No yeah. abandoning this podcast <laughs> half episode. And you better believe that I'll probably I'll stick around for the next the next one as well after this week. Episode twenty, you mean? Episode twenty. That's a good episode. I, I'm only predicting. I'm guessing it will be as well. This one might be good, but we'll we'll have to find out. Anyways, we for those of you who don't know what this podcast is about, it's about two of our most favorite things in the world, which are beer and music. Yes, yeah, so we put them all in one place. This podcast, American Brews and Tunes. So what could be better than that? Nothing. Nothing, exactly. Except for more beer and more music, you know? Yeah. Wow. Maybe we'll make a second podcast called More American Brews and Tunes. <laughs> Just kidding. But maybe not, actually. Uh, anyways, uh, what we do on this podcast is we review new beers. Uh, yes. Each week, we, we each try a, a brand new brew that brand we've never had. Brand new beer. And, and Jesse, who likes indie folk music, recommends an indie folk album for me to listen to that I've never heard. And myself, a avid punk rock listener, recommends a punk rock album that Jesse has to listen to. We come back and review those albums whilst trying the new brews. Yeah, so it's a it's a all, recipe it's a for all success. Around good time and a recipe for success. Yes, if you were to want uh, want to you know like write a recipe um, that you wanted to be successful, it would be this. It would be <laughs> you just have to look up American Brews and Tunes podcast yeah. and then. Shabam. They'd be like, wow, that they're right. That is a great recipe for success. Take these two new brews plus these two new albums, add plus, a little bit of ship it up beep tow and you got success. <laughs> add a little bit of ship it up beep tow uh, So anyways, you've had me listen to this al- album called The Balcony by some rando band called Catfish and the Bottleman. Yes. I mean, they're not a random band. For me, they're pretty rando. Yeah. Is your band rando that you've been listening to? No, I think most everybody has heard of them. Then who is it? Uh, it is the band Nirvana. What? 
The album is Nevermind. Nevermind what? Exactly. <laughs> Good Anyways, one. Anyways, before we come back and talk about these albums, why don't we talk about the Bruce? Yeah, you know what? Why don't we do that? Uh, what are you going to partake in this week, Jesse? I've been really liking Lagunitas recently. And sometimes if you look at their bottles, it'll tell you how to pronounce it. You yes. know what I'm talking about? It says, it says Lagunitas. Lagunitas. It, I believe it says right oh. underneath the, the name somewhere, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, right there. Say Lagunitas. Ni as in K-N-E. Tus. Tus. Like as T-U-S-S. T-U-S-S. Uh, but anyway, I'm having a, a limited release by them. Their Wilco Tango Foxtrot. A multi, robust, jobless recovery ale. We're not quite You're gonna have the to, red or in the black. You probably should repeat that because I was chewing really loud in front of the microphone. Yeah, why are you chewing a Dorito? I thought it would be funny to do right in front of the mic. <laughs> you thought it would be funny to do right when I'm talking about this beer? Well, I, I did disregard what was going on <laughs> and just thought of the most funny thing at the moment. Okay, I'll say it again. I'm drinking the Lagunitas... Wilco Tango Foxtrot Ale. <laughs> <laughs> I should just get these. I'm going to push the, the bag of the rears away from me. Yeah, you probably should. <laughs> that will happen the entire episode if I don't. And it says, it, which is a multi robust jobless recovery ale. Well, how not, many robusts can you have? Multi robust? A multi robust. What do you mean a multi? What, Are they m- having multiple robusts? No. Like, it's, it's a strange... Malty. Oh, malty. Oh, okay. M-A-L-T-Y. <laughs> yeah, like, mal- like malty. I'm thinking, like, M-U-L, like, multiple. Not like, like a multi-grain? Yeah. No, no, no. Okay. I was so confused, because I, I was, was very really looking at there. the bottle, reading malty. All right, now that I'm glad and that's I cleared up... I also would have said malty, instead of malty. I can't did really... You hear, did you hear the I, slight difference? Not even really, no. Malty. 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 And, um, I'm still not even hearing it. Okay. Most people would say okay. malty okay. or malty. Okay. Even then, it's, it's too... Disregard this whole... Multiple. We're, we're going Multi. on a huge gress. Multi. Like mulling. Multi. Gress. Gress. And then there's malty. And there's gress. I'm just saying. That's, um, there's a difference. No, you're just gressing. A malty, <laughs> robust, jobless recovery ale. Mm. We're not quite in the red or in the black. Does that mean we're in the brown? I hope I'm not in the brown. <laughs> it's a brown ale? Um, I guess so. I mean... That's that that I guess that's what it implies. And since for it's WTF, coming at, it's coming at in at. Oh yeah, that's that's true. Wilco Tank Tango Foxtrot. Like that uh, Tina Fey movie, Whis- Whiskey Tango Foxtrot. Remember that? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, it's coming at eight point one percent ABV. Uh, with a sixty-four point two zero IBU. Wow. So I'm kind of excited to try hefty, this. Hefty, it's hefty. a limited release, so anytime you can get a limited release from Lagunitas. That's a good deal. Here's what I'm having. It's a from a brewery called Braxton Labs, uh, which I'd never heard of them ever, but uh, they just they're from Kentucky and they just started their distribution in Nashville. Um, oh. This is the New England style IPA, uh, and it says number one. So I don't know if that means it's their first type of Could New England their, IPA or their first their first beer, beer they, they brewed. brewed perhaps. Who knows? But it's. Uh, Here's the description. Double dry hopped India pale ale featuring aromas of peach, mango, and apricot, or as some would say, apricot. apricot. Yeah. Refined bitterness with a juicy finish. Ooh. And mine comes in at 6.8% alcohol, which is pretty average, I suppose. It doesn't give me yeah, any IBUs, average. but I'll see if I can find it later. It does have a lightning bolt on that glass, though. Yeah, and That's it's got cool. a sticker on this can, so it looks like it's, I don't want to say... Cheap, but definitely independently made. Oh, yeah. I mean... So what do you say we crack these and pour them? You know what? Why don't we grab our signature glasses? Our signature shibbity beep doo glasses? No, shibbity beep dow glasses. I was testing you. Anyways, <laughs> I have a can. Jesse has a bottle, so... I was testing let's, you. Okay. Uh, let's give the, the cricket a quick crack. crack. Oh, baby. Oh. Oh, mine smells nice. I'm going to pour it. All right, go for straight it. Straight into my glass. Pour it straight into your glass. Pour it straight into your glass. That was not a good song. It was an all right song. It was good for spur of the moment, but I bet you I could write a better one. All right, go for it right now. Cracking the beers. Where's it gonna go? Into the glass. Oh, yeah. Okay. Into the glass. More. Yeah. Ooh, that smells good. Filling up my glass with some beer. Isn't it delightful? Smells so good. (laughs) Remember the... uh... The one, uh, that one time that one piano player came into one of our music classes? 
Which piano player? Uh, the guy who could like write a. Fugue. Oh, the the blind guy, right? Yeah, the guy who could write a fugue on, on the spot. Do you yeah. remember him? There was this in our um, college music theory class. Is that what it was? I think it was. Uh, or maybe Arl it skills. It was. I think it was Arl skills. Whenever because Doc Smith was teaching it. No, there was a. That's not when he was teaching. A theory. piano player who could write these really uh, something called a fugue, which is a very 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 technically advanced type of composition. Yeah, and he could write them on the spot. But not only would he write them on the spot, he would he would tell people, he'd say, give me three notes, three usually, random usually notes. Usually four notes. Four notes? He'd yeah. say, give me four random notes. And us being music students gave him notes that were difficult to write with. Right. Like, and he sat there and took those notes, and he would write the fugue off of that. But not only would we do that, but he'd say, give me a subject. And someone would give him a subject, and he'd make up a song to sing over top of that fugue. No. No, he did. Oh, yeah, you're right, he did. Because he wrote the fugue, and then he wrote the lyrics at the same time. Super weird. So let's... Um, but... What, the reason I was, the reason I mentioned him, was because he was always like, "You're always a lot happier in life if you sing about what you're doing." It's and true. so you were just singing about pouring beer into your glass. <laughs> and so uh, that actually is as a scientifically sound fact. If yeah. you sing about what you're doing in life, you're statistically going to be a more happy person. Yeah. So here, sitting in front of the mic, oh, sitting in front of the mic, recording podcast. What? Oh yeah, I'm about to check in this beer. Where? On our favorite beer app. What app? Untapped. Uh, well, I have to try it first before I check it in. So what do you say we give it the uh, old one-two shibbity beep cheers and then give it the message? <laughs> the old one-two shibbity beep cheers, eh? All right. One, two, shibbity beep no! Cheers. Oh, that's solid. That's super solid. Hmm. Uh, off my first taste, I want another taste immediately. It's that good. <laughs> well, why don't you go in for a second taste? I already did. That was my second taste right there. Oh, man. Um, I guess I should comment on the color. It's it's a little... Mine's actually a little hazy. Um, not super much. Yeah, it's uh, not it's too bad. Probably like, I don't know, copper? Orange? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, but it's it's got a nice uh, white foam on the top, and it's super delicious. It smells exactly how they explained it. Pretty fruity, uh, pretty hoppy. Mm. And it tastes the same. It's very juicy, very bitter. Uh, if, if you like fruity IPAs or IPAs that have a naturally fruity Ooh. flavor, you would like this because it is super juicy mm. and dank in the way that IPAs should be. Right. Delicious. Well, I guess IPAs don't have to be this way. but No, but that's maybe your personal preference. Yeah, for IPAs, it's it's what I tend to like a little bit better. Juicy. Is, is juicy a, a big juicy IPA. Citrusy. Yeah, which was like that one um, mantra and a bunch of other... Um, Southern breweries came together and made the Big Juicy Dank IPA. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was juicy and dank. I do remember that. And it was an IPA. And it was delicious. Uh, but this one, I would def off my first two tastes, I would 100% get this again. It is so good. Now, Untap says that my beer is a brown ale, imperial slash double. Well, based on the alcohol uh, percentage, I would say and it sounds like it. After the first couple of sips, it's definitely... Actually, fairly close to what that describes. Does it taste boozy? Because it tastes boozy, but it's not thick like a stout. It's like kind of thin like a brown ale. But you're still getting the but you're still the getting malty. the really nice maltiness. 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 You getting the roasty malties or just like a malty malty? I'm getting because the, there's a I'm, difference. Well, let me let me get another sip here. Because there's more like like a lot of times you'll get like caramel malts versus like the roasted malts. Right. I'm getting more roasty, less sweet. Okay, interesting. That's not what I expect from a brown ale. Brown ale. Not that well, brown I mean, ales aren't like that. Oh yeah, that was nice. That was a good. Do you remember that? Uh, that was a good. The founder's right there. Sumatra Brown. Yeah. Really coffee. -y. Yeah. That one was definitely roasty. Would you get yours again? Well, I might not get the chance because it's a limited release. So if I see it, it was it was cheap at the place I got it, so I'd probably get it again. What's that you say? You want to give a little switcheroo? Sure. I thought that's what you said. What's the? Uh... <laughs> Shib it a paper switch. Shib it a paper switch. <laughs> <laughs> Whoop, whoop. Oh, I can I can definitely see what you're saying. Yeah, you're even, even just by smell, this you're, is you're like getting like really, the juicy, really juicy, and like fruity and, yeah. and juicy, but you're yeah. still getting the hoppy smell. Yours smells really roasty. That's pretty darn good. Yours is really good too. Without the thickness of a stout, I'm definitely understanding what you mean by like the the roast. Kind of taste roast the booziness too. Yeah, a little bit in there. A yeah. little bit, not a lot, but a definitely tiny bit present. Though. Yeah, yeah, and I'm well, very satisfied with both of these brews. Yeah, mine. The it's kind of the color of the brown ale too. You can see through it mm -hmm. still, but it's still kind of dark. Yeah. It's, Pretty darn good. That's a really good brown ale. So uh, I'd put that with uh, some of my favorite browns. Oh, another well, one of my favorite browns would be the, 
the Dogfish Head India Brown Ale. Yeah, that's a, that's a good one. So it doesn't. Um. Well, Anyways, if anything changes about our brews <clears throat> as they warm up, we will let you know. Yes, because that is a point. I think I went first last week with the album, so do you want to go first this time? I'll go, I'll go first this time. Because the album came out first, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> do you know what year it came out? Uh, yeah. The greatest year. The greatest year of all. Yeah. 1991. Yeah, why is that the greatest year? Because Stephen was born, and no other reason. <laughs> <laughs> and because the Twins won the World Series that year. And the Penguins won the Stanley Cup. And because I was born. Oh, yeah. And it was the last time that the Pirates had a winning season before their 20-year drought. Yeah, that's a rough one. But anyways, yeah. Anyway, 1991, uh, Nirvana. Never mind. Yep, the album Nirvana. The album Never Mind by Nirvana. Is this a punk album? No. Then why did I recommend this? Uh, I don't know. You tell me. Well, this is widely considered to be uh, one of the most um, influential and genre shifting albums of all time, like the mainstream genre yeah, shift. That makes sense. Uh, the the big like rock type style of music that was big right before this was like the hair metal, like Poison, White Snake, all those bands. Like you get wore leather and had yeah. were flashy and long hair. And then this guy, Kurt Cobain, comes out in a yeah. cardigan and jeans. But even not that, the, the people would scream. Their voices were always like, they go, yeah. Oh, like yeah. yeah. They, they're always on pitch, real good singers, crazy yeah. things. Yeah. The guitar playing was, I don't want to say super technical, but they could but it was shred. The, yeah, they could and shred, shred though. Really and this is like very laid back and lazy. Kurt Cobain... Not the greatest vocalist by any stretch of the imagination. I like, not his, a very, I like his voice. I like though. it too, but it's, he's not a great singer. He's not a great guitar player either. Mm. Uh, but the writing's fantastic. Yeah. Um, and that's that's also a point that I uh, that I read today because I looked up like the Wikipedia page on grunge. Yeah. And they said that uh, the, the lyrical the lyrical content in grunge like changed with, with this type of music. Mm-hmm. It got way more introspective and. Like way more uh, emotional and more dense, and less about and less girls. about just like yeah, woohoo, yeah, mm-hmm. and more like <sighs> like what was that one poison song? Don't need nothing but a good time. Oh yeah, yeah. So like nothing. Uh, flashy is not really the best word for it. That music but, was flashy for so well, yeah. yeah, flashy. But like the the lyrical content Nirvana's is very. Not. Uh, l- the lyrical content of that hair metal is like really. Uh, does not have any substance. Not to marginalize it, but correct. I'd say for, uh, g- generally, yes. It's like if you're drinking a, a Bud Light. Yeah. Or a Miller Light. It's still beer, but it's not good beer. So anyways, Nirvana never... I mean, uh, yes, what you said, but Nirvana never mind changed the shift of music. Yes. And in turn, allowed punk rock to be what it is. There, Without Nirvana, there right. would have never been Green Day or The Offspring, and punk rock as we know today wouldn't exist. Right. Yeah. Because punk rock, like some purists would say, died in the 70s, probably. Oh, okay. 80s yeah. with like the Clash and the Ramones and, and then. Yeah. But is it actually dead? No, it just came back in a different form. Exactly. Thank you, Nirvana. And let's just see why it's so great. I'll let you go with your review. Well, uh, let's start off with the first track. Five out of five. I recommended it. Smells like teen spirit. According to VH1 songs of the 90s, this is the number one song. It was 200 top songs of the 90s. <gasps> All right, Mr. Factoid. I watched that program many a time, and it's a shame that Blink-182 only had one song on the chart, but still, it's all right. No, oh, well, can't win them all, I guess. Isn't that curious, though? Like, the number one song of the 90s came out in 91, according to VH1? Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, probably for the same reason that you just said, why it's so monumental. Yeah. The whole album is. Agreed. Uh, but this song, I mean, it has the like the really iconic guitar riff. Yeah, so that's part of the reason why I wanted to recommend it, just because it's so it's so good. It's probably their most iconic song. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it seems that this song is kind of about teenage angstiness, kind of. Hard to tell a lot of times um, what he's singing about. Well, yeah, in a lot of their songs, uh, all the lyrics are kind of very obscure and well, kind I, of convoluted. I might not... I want to say cryptic, but I don't think I that might be the best word. 
because I wouldn't say yeah. cryptic, but it's it's just it's not like he was like, all right, now I'm gonna write this code. Where... It wasn't the code, but it's he he clearly means something, but it, his writing is it's like it, odd. Mean, it means something to him, and he's Kurt Cobain is probably the only one who could tell you what it actually means. Yeah. You know? So so my it's... best guess, uh, just basically because of the line, "Here we are now, entertain us." Mm-hmm. It's kind of like a teenager being like really angsty and being like, "You have to." Like entertain us now, and I mean even in the video they're they're like at a concert, right? And, in a uh, in a gymnasium, in a gymnasium, a pep rally, yeah. I think, right? Yeah, something like that. Do you remember the last shot of the oh. video? No. It's just like this close up of Kurt Cobain's face, and he's like, Ugh. it's like really yeah. kind of off weird. the wall, yeah. But it's yeah. really cool. Uh, but I think I think if you like haven't heard any Nirvana, if somehow you haven't heard this song, if you this is a great the rock, or if you're Brandon Fraser from that one movie, yeah, what? <laughs> There's that one movie where he's in a bomb movie? shelter for years and years. You ever see that movie? I can't remember. I can't remember what it's called. But he finally gets out of the bomb shelter and he's in like culture shock. It's like I think it's called Blast from the Past. Oh, okay. Like there's one scene where he it's goes a TV show. It's a movie. a movie. Like at one scene he gets a CD. And, but he doesn't know what a CD is, so he takes it back to his place and puts it on a turntable and tries to play it. <laughs> Classic. Classic. Bra- oh, Brandon Frazier. Frazier. I, pardon my, my pardon slip your, up. Uh, pardon your bad speaking. Well, everyone calls him Frazier. It's, he's the only one who pronounces his own name right. <laughs> That's funny. That's true. Uh, anyway, I recommend that song. Great song. Uh, track number two is called In Bloom, the Nevermind version. I guess. Apparently there was an earlier version. That's what it said on, on the you album. You got the remaster. Right? You were listening to the remastered one. Yeah, but it says Nevermind version. Uh, there was like three or four bonus tracks and had like the boombox v- versions and the unreleased demos. Oh, okay. So, so it was it's probably the same version. Yeah, it's, yeah. Okay. I think you're the whatever you listen to just gave it a strange title. Um, I like this song a lot. Uh, the, Great song. The title would suggest that it's about a child who is growing up and like figuring out what he likes uh one of the lines is he's the one who likes all our pretty songs and he likes to sing along but he knows not what it means or something like but that he knows not what it means yeah knows not what it means um so i i don't really know again like in this song it's to say what it's about but it's yeah that that'd be my best guess i really like it get four out of five um and i'm i generally like all these songs too Mm-hmm. And it was um, another single pushed off the album that did extremely well. Mm-hmm. Uh, the next song is called "Come As You Are," which, which is another three. single that they pushed that did extremely well. <laughs> yeah, um, I give it four to five. Uh, it's a little bit more pulled back musically. It's not as heavy. The guitar tone is iconic, and lots of people have copied it since. Yeah, I think uh, he used he played a Fender Mustang. Had a, what, what effect was that on the pedal? Um, I think it's like. Flange or something. Well, flange like that. and maybe it's like kind chorus. Of like a very, very slight flange. Come as you are, as you were, as I want you to be. Yeah. Very good song. So good. But you haven't, you haven't recommended those two, so that's surprising. No. I'm curious to see what no, you No, I kind of wanted to, I don't know. Recommends one like that most weren't. people know. I, I want to recommend one song that a lot of people know, but of course this one is... Yeah. The one, you can see the, which one I re- recommend. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, on to track number four. This song is called Breed. Ooh, I like this song. Um, yeah, it's definitely really good. It's faster. It's way more punk. Like way more way more like punk rock. Away from me slow. Yep. I don't even know what he says there. Um, I don't care. I don't care. One of the, I don't care. I don't care. Yeah, he says, like, he repeats one line over and over again. And then it's like... Oh, I know the chorus, the chorus, yeah. Um, yeah, if you can, we can never break his head. But I like the, the one line from it where he says, We can plant a house, we, we can, can build, build a tree. <laughs> I like that because it's backwards, yeah, it's very so, on purpose. Yeah, it's so weird. Yeah. We heard um, Frank Turner play this song. I don't know if you remember. No? Oh, yeah. At one of his... At, his shows, he usually will play a, a electric guitar in one or two songs, usually Glorious You. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, when he gets his guitar, he likes to make a big deal about it because he normally plays acoustic. Yeah. And they'll do like a half of a cover song of a really so fast song. he'll be like, song. with an electric guitar, I can do this. And, and then, then he played this song once. Yeah. It was cool. That was but enough cool. of that. Um, the next track is track number five, which I recommended. 
Track number five, what a great title. Yeah. <laughs> the, so- <laughs> the song is called Lithium. Oh, like a lithium ion battery. <laughs> Maybe. Or like the um, the periodic element, lithium. Maybe. I have no idea. <laughs> also, the, I think the they titles gave, in reference to. I think they gave lithium as a medicine also. Oh, really? Yes. Uh, while you're talking about it, I'm going to do a little, quick little Google search. Okay. Pulling out my handy dandy iPhone, um, the greatest filmmaker of all phones. Oh, gosh. Uh, this song is extremely catchy. Uh, it starts off, you know, I'm so happy because today I found my friends. They're in my head. So he's got a little... And I'm so... Would you say yeah. there's some, some mental problems going on? Oh, yeah. I would think so. I think so, anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, evidenced by the fact that he committed suicide. Uh, but um, I mean, lithium is a, uh, a a drug that they give to treat and prevent manic episodes of bipolar disorder. So well, that's, that would make that's sense. definitely what it is. That's, I thought it was something along the lines of that. That would make sense then. Mm-hmm. Uh, this song seems like it gives you the quote unquote grunge feel. I can see that because like the chorus is a uh, oh, what is the chorus again? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 All he says is yeah. Yeah. Until that. So it's kind of like, um, do you, it's kind of like slower, like, you can kind of like bob your head to it. And, yeah. Uh, but I believe this song is uh, probably one of my favorite on the album. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, the lyrics are kind of weird, but I guess that's reflected mm-hmm. in the title. For the medicine they use to treat bipolar disorder. I like the line, I'm so ugly, that's okay, because so are you. <laughs> yeah, well, I just I, I think that line's really funny, because it's, he says, I'm so ugly, but that's okay, because so are you. We broke our mirrors. Mm-hmm. So, like, they're saying, like, they're, you, like, you're seeing your reflection, but since we broke our mirrors, like, it doesn't matter. Because we can't see anymore. Because we can't see our reflection anymore, yeah. so we can't see how, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I think a lot of the lyrics in that song are very clever. Uh... Pretty darn good. Uh, we're going to semi-skip over track number six. Um, That's a dark song. It's a good song, but it's very creepy. <laughs> uh, it's all acoustic. It's and catchy, it's, but very creepy. Subject-wise, it's about it's pretty dark, and we'll let you, if you're so yeah, inclined you're to learn about it, you can, you can research it. A little too dark for American Brews and Tunes. Did you, yeah. did you look it up so you know? Oh, we've, talked about, it. we've talked about it yeah, before. It's, yeah, uh, it's... Too dark for us to say. So if you are want to venture into the darkness, I'm sure you could find it on Wikipedia. And then there there are songs like that in the album too, where it's like, ooh, what does he really mean? Like, Which, why? It's a really catchy song, but then yeah. you start listening, like, wait, what is what is that? And then you look it up, and you're like, oh yeah. my gosh. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah. Anyway, we're gonna move on to another one that's another song that Steve likes a lot. It's maybe my favorite Nirvana song of all time. It's, it's track. It's called track number seven. No. It's called track. No. <laughs> it's, uh, it's track number seven, and it's called territorial pissings. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. If you can maybe guess why Steve likes this song, it's because it's super fast. So Galdern fast, and it's really it's kind of short. <laughs> Lyrically, um, it's funny and clever though. Yeah. Do you remember any of the verse? The verses. Yeah. One of my favorite lines from the verses. Um, what is it? Never met a wise man. If so, it's a woman. <laughs> so he's like never met a wise man or the so first line is when I was an alien cultures weren't opinions gotta find a way a better way a better way Dave yeah. Grohl kills it on the drums also yeah. uh, in case you guys weren't aware Dave Grohl uh, who is now the lead singer guitar player vocalist songwriter. Uh, songwriter of Foo Fighters used to play drums for Nirvana Yeah, uh, and this album really exemplifies his drumming. Yeah, um, but especially this song. This uh, this song definitely shows the grungy vocal style. Because like near the end of the song, he's like, his like voice is cracking. <laughs> yeah, his like voice is cracking a bunch. Whatever he's singing, he gotta find a scream. way. Gotta find a way. Do you remember it's how it like starts? Weird. Uh, Their bass player sings. Come on, people now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Smile on your brother. Everybody get together. Try got to, to love, love one, one another, another right now. now. And then, bam, mm-hmm. bam, bam. And then it starts. Great song. Yeah. Uh, you didn't recommend this? No. What? Sorry. That's all right. 
I knew you were going to talk about it a lot, so I didn't need to recommend it. Mm-hmm. Uh, the next song is called Drain You. Uh, I give it four to five. It's a good song, too. It's a pretty darn good melody in the beginning of the verses. Uh, but later later in the song, I, I'm not too fond of it. The bridge is kind of strange. Uh, the bridge kind of like slows down and goes it's up like into a different down direction. And it's like a, it's an instrumental bridge, and it's kind of strange. Yeah, it's long and weird and but, almost out of place, but that's all right. Uh, anyway, track number nine would be a skipper for me. It's what is called it? Lounge Act. Oh, that's a weird one, isn't it? I gave it? it three out of five. It has a cool bass, bass line, but yeah, it's a, otherwise... It's a, I, I might actually skip this one, too. The next song, track number 10, is called Stay Away. And I definitely would not stay away from this song. Yeah. Because it's great. It has a very nice contrast between verse and chorus. Stay away. Yeah. Stay away. Monkey see, monkey, monkey do. do. Da 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 Great song. Um, that's all about all you have to say about that song. Track number eleven is called "On a Plane." Plane spelt P-L-A-I-N. Like um, like a geographical plane. Plane, yeah. Yeah. Is that the geographical plane? Is that the, the correct term? A plane that you'd find in the uh, the yeah the wilderness. Yeah, like the I, safari plane. I think maybe in this context, he's talking about a different plane of being. Yeah. Because uh, it seems like he's talking about being on drugs, maybe. Probably. He definitely uh, was the, a heavy drug user. One of the lyrics is, I'm on a plane. I can't, I can't complain. Explain. Oh, I can't complain. Yeah. So I think that song's pretty darn good. Uh, but the one song that I want to talk about for a little bit before we move on to your album is the song Something in the Way. Mm, slow and... The biggest contrast to everything else on the entire album. Yes, it does not sound like anything uh, else. And that's why I recommended it. Okay, interesting. Not just that reason. Uh, there's a lot of... Uh, not like controversy, but a lot of different opinions on what the song means. Mm-hmm. Um, but most of them have to do with uh, his like emotional state. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're like one of the lyrics is talking about living under a bridge and uh, like eat it, like living off of grass and water droplets from the ceiling. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people are like, oh, well, that's because there was one time in, in, uh, in Kirk. Kurt's life, whenever he was, uh, when he lived under a bridge, whenever his family kicked him out of the house and he was living under a bridge yeah. for a while. Um, but I, think I guess a lot of people say, I guess that's been disproven though. Like that I think a lot of people say that, yeah. Uh, so from what I could tell, it seems like something in the way is in reference to something is something being in the way, um, of his emotional state, like getting better. That's kind of like what I can tell. Interesting. Yeah. So, and it's very somber and uh, very somber, kind of haunting. Yeah, it is very haunting. Yeah, little, especially, especially because of you know the fact that he committed suicide. Yeah. A couple, after a couple albums after this. Yeah. Fun uh, trivia though. Uh, I don't know if you're going to touch upon the when they record the vocals. Uh, no, you can though. Uh, Butch Vig, who's a, a pretty well now he's a pretty well renowned uh, producer. Uh, he was in a hotel room with Kurt Cobain, and Kurt was going over this song. And he was singing it, and, and Butch Vig was so enamored with how Kurt's voice sounded at that time that he set up his microphone and just recorded it in the hotel, and that was the final version they put on the album. That's pretty cool. So it's kind of a cool little bit of trivia. I remember hearing this song in the movie Jarhead. I don't know if you ever saw that. I never saw with it. Jake Gyllenhaal and uh, I read that it was Peter Sarsgaard. That it wasn't that song. That's I mean, a that really, I mean, that movie. <laughs> really depressing movie. Yeah, so I guess this song kind of fits well. Yeah, I remember, like, um, the, I remember the trailer for the movie when they came out. I was like, "Ooh, that looks cool!" And then I didn't see it until I was much older. Yeah, and I was like, "Good thing I didn't watch this as a young kid. <laughs> this is not happy. It's really yeah. dark." Uh, but then the whole the title of the album, never mind, comes back to my mind quite a bit <laughs> during songs like this one, mm-hmm. uh, where why so? Where apparently it's him trying to process through emotional problems that he has. But then like the album is called Never Mind. Mm-hmm. I was like, well, just never mind. Like, whatever. oh well, whatever. Never so, mind. Whatever. I'm just gonna. I'm on a plane. Mm-hmm. I can't complain. It's that it smells like Teen Spirit, where he says, "Oh well, whatever. Never mind." Yeah, that's the one where he says, uh, "Hello, hello, um, hello, hello." Yeah, where the line, uh, something about being late. It's your choice. Don't be late. Oh well, whatever. Never mind. Mm-hmm. I think is what it is. Uh, Had you listened to the entire album before this? 
No. So it's. I had listened to quite a few songs from it. But never the full album. Yeah, because I believe my brother had listened to this album, or he had this album. I like to think that I did you a general service by making you. Yeah, I think so. It's a if you've never, for those of you who have never listened to it, you should. It's a pretty significant album in the trajectory of music. So there you go. Yeah. Um. Anything else to input about it? Um. The only other thing that I would say about it is also check out the. Unplugged concert in New York. Oh yes, another extremely great concert where I think it came out. Was it after this album? Was it? Or one after? It came out definitely after this album, but I don't remember yeah, if it was after this. But that's one or a very, next a one. really, really cool thing to watch. Yeah, and it's it's um, it's pretty iconic. Yeah, because they do a lot of these heavy songs and they strip them back and make them acoustic. Yeah, and I remember and they they ended with um, a cover of. Where did you um, sleep last? Where did you sleep last night? That's one of my favorite songs. And it's, on they that. do it really well. Yeah. And did you do you hear the story about after that? No. Uh, they they were gonna be done, and one of the producers wanted them to do an encore, and they wanted him to play "Smells Like Teen Spirit." And he says, "Not only would "Smells Like Teen Spirit" not translate well to acoustic, but that's the best ending of any concert that I could like play." He's like, he's like, <laughs> so he's just like, F- "Where did you sleep la- last <laughs> night?" Is the the best ending I could have done. So no. yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. And it, it's true. It really is a great acoustic album. And, and yeah. I'm glad that they. That's ended probably with that. it's probably one of the best acoustic. Isn't it one of the best acu- one acoustic of them. albums? Yeah. And they put uh, David Bowie's uh, "The Man Who Sold the World," and I think it's better than David Bowie's version, actually. Yeah. It's so good. I haven't listened to either version in a while, though. Yeah. But both great. But anyway. Anyway is right. Uh, I'll go on to my album, which is uh, "The Balcony" by Catfish and the Bottlemen. A little bit less convoluted. A lot less convoluted, and, and a lot less introspective. Yes. In fact, mostly not introspective at all. <laughs> yeah. uh, this band is not American, so it fits well with every band that Jesse recommends to, for me. Well, I mean, for the, the most past, part, the past few weeks. Uh, they're from Wales, which do you consider Wales England? Yeah, it's just in the same. That's like saying, do you consider? Well, it's, it's that's great, like saying Great Britain. How about that, right? That's like saying, do you consider? Yeah, United Kingdom, UK. UK, they're, that's they're what. From, yeah, they're from the UK, UK, not from England, but yeah. they're from the UK. I, the whole categoriz- categorization of the UK and those countries kind of confuses me from time to time. Yeah, well, they, it's changed quite a bit, but we, we don't need to get into that. We don't need to. <laughs> um, wow! Uh, finally, this is a good album that you've recommended for me. <laughs> uh, the past oh, ones that you've on. recommended aren't bad, but a lot of them necessarily didn't stick with me, uh, and I might not revisit those ones yeah. as much. Uh, but I think this one uh, was pretty good from the beginning. Um, immediately, just I liked to, it. Just trying to broaden your horizons, bro. Yeah, by bringing it back to something that you knew I'd probably like better. <laughs> um, but this this band's kind of interesting. There's like a slight, ever so slight touch of indie, and then a whole lot of like rock. Just yeah. almost straight I would rock. Say more rock. Um, and that was one of my first impressions, and it was even more uh, affirmed when I read this quote from the lead singer and one of the songwriters. Mm-hmm. Uh, his name is Van Mc. McCain? McCann? It's M, lowercase c, uppercase c, A-N-N. Uh, he said, McCann. I feel like everybody started thinking too outside the box, trying to be arty and different. We wanted to stay inside the box. <laughs> <laughs> In terms of, like, they just want to play rock music. And what they wrote about, yeah. Yeah. And so, I mean, they really did. Well, that definitely reflects what, they, what this album is mostly about. Uh, my rating system is beer. Okay, nice. Yeah, so I thought that'd be a fun one. I see the, I see the first rating right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first song is called Homesick. And no, this is not a day to remember. <laughs> Actually, I like it better than a day to remember Homesick. Oh. Sorry. Sorry, um, day to remember. Uh, but this is a great opener. Uh, it's like got this really reserved intro, and the verses are kind of laid back, and then it gets real big, so it's got this great dynamic... Um, Shift. Difference, yeah. Yeah, difference, yeah. Uh, and not all the songs necessarily... Ref- well, actually, a lot of them do reflect reflect a great dynamic range. Um, but I thought this was a great opener. I liked it a lot. Um, I almost recommended it, but in the end... Not quite. Not quite. Um, Did my you rating, you rated it? My rating is Stone IPA, which is a super solid IPA that I would love to go back to any time I want to. Nice. It's just not the best. So it's, it's a great song. Um, song number two is called Kathleen kind of sounds like an old lady song because that's an old Kath- lady song <laughs> kathleen <laughs> oh kathleen she's old i gave this song uh the this song a rating of lagunitas sucks which as we all know does not suck it's yeah. a great beer and i recommended this song oh nice um the song is about a girl who he keeps coming back to even though the relationship most likely won't work 
Um, mm-hmm. But it, he keeps coming back because there's a lot of physical attraction and emotional things, even even though it tends to go sour, which I'm sure we can all relate to a little bit, maybe. Maybe not, but either way, uh, I like the first line where he says, She's simpatico! Where I didn't get a, a straight uh, translation of it, but um, typically either in, in Spanish or Italian, it means easygoing or easy to get along with. Yeah. So, I mean, that makes sense. Someone you can get along easy with, you're attracted to. Um, but the pre-chorus on the song is the money notes for me. The money notes. Uh, it's, when I come. Uh, it's the best. Da, 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 da. And actually, the first time that I heard this song, Jesse played it on his phone after we recorded the last episode. And I heard this and I was like, oh, this chorus is great. It's such a catchy chorus. And, and Jesse's like, this isn't the chorus. <laughs> I was like, what? This is so hooky and catchy. How, how could it not be the chorus? And then the chorus comes and in. And then the chorus comes in. And it's a lot less melodic, but it's a lot more rock. I gotta give it to you. I, I you give, give me problems. problems. And it's got some hi-hat scats. scats. Yeah. It's, it's a pretty cool chorus, but I really love that pre-chorus so much more. Um, but, you know, whatever. It's a really good song. It's very good. Like I said, I recommend it, even though the chorus isn't as good as the pre-chorus. On to song number three. Which is called, if I flip the right page, it's called Cocoon. Cocoon! And no, it's not that weird old long movie, which is actually kind of a good movie. <laughs> and it's also not, uh... Cocoona. Are, <laughs> are you doing a Pokemon reference? Yeah. <laughs> Did you know that I almost gave my rating system as Pokemon? Really? Today? Yeah, but then I, was, I had, for the first song, I had trouble, like, singing of a good Pokemon to recommend, so I was like, I'll go with something I know better. Beer. <laughs> Beer. Um, but I gave this... Uh, song a rating of the victory sour monkey that was pretty good uh, and i recommended it okay nice. uh, for those of you who don't know about the victory sour monkey uh it's clearly a sour uh, yep. sour beer and sours tend to be really hit or miss and like it's not my favorite type of beer um but this beer is a take on the the golden monkey golden monkey which is victory's belgian triple double belgian... triple i think I think triple. Triple. Yeah, probably uh, it's triple. It's a super, super great um, Belgian beer. It's like, uh, how would you describe it? Uh, super smooth. The Belgian yeast is present. Very drinkable and delicious. I mean, if you know what, you know, like the, the type of flavor Belgian yeast give you. This one's done really well. So yeah. when you have a Belgian beer that's also a sour, it's almost kind of a weird, not great combination that might, I might steer clear of actually. Might almost. go sour. Yeah, I might. Good joke. <laughs> Uh, but Woo-hoo! in the end, the the Victory Sour Monkey is my favorite sour beer um, that you've had of my one of my not uh, not favorite styles. It's one of my favorite beers. Nice. Uh, and I ended up really liking Wait, this. One of your favorite beers in general? Uh, it's my favorite sour beer. How about that? Okay. Uh, maybe one of my favorite Victory beers. Okay. Um, it's that a, makes sense. So this song's really good. I recommend it. Not my favorite song on the album, but it's up there. Okay. Uh, the song's about falling in love with a girl who's out of his league or maybe a little too classy and has friends who don't see the mm-hmm. relationship as being good. Yeah. Uh, and it's super obvious at the end of, um, I think it's the end of the pre-course or the end of the, the verse where he says, your friends all hated it. And it's talking about when they were hanging out drinking. Um, and in the chorus, he says F it a lot. Yeah. And I guess... Uh, censorship rating if you guys are offended by language there's quite a bit in this album yeah uh i don't think they use anything but f words as curses if i can remember correctly maybe in maybe an s word not that i remember i think it's just f words uh there's quite a few here and there but um in this song he's saying um f it if they talk uh f it if they try to get to us so he's saying don't worry about them don't worry about your friends or family who think that i'm no good for you let's just have our relationship that's a good thing and let's make the most of it yeah um but it's interesting later on in the song when he says he doesn't like he doesn't care if she needs to pretend to be drunk in order to hang out with him Mm -hmm. do you remember that line yeah it's kind of odd because he's telling her don't worry about what they say and then at the end he's like if you're so worried that you have to pretend to be drunk to hang out with me that's okay also so it's kind of almost contradictory. Yeah, it's very but strange. It's interesting. Yeah. Again, the pre-chorus is even better than the chorus. <laughs> uh, even though the chorus is great, uh, I really love the drums and there's like a delay guitar on the uh, the pre-chorus and it's yeah. just super hooky. Um, recommend the song. It's great. It's great. <laughs> it's great. Song number Fallout, which kind of falls out of my recommended songs because I song don't recommend number it. Song number Fallout? Song number four, Fallout. Oh, it okay. falls out of my recommendation. Oh, shoot. Um, I gave this uh, a rating of Sam Adams, which 
Oh, St. Adams is you're gonna find at most bars, and it's probably better than anything else you're gonna find. How about that? Yeah, that's that's why I picked St. Adams. Gotcha. Uh, the song's about having falling outs with uh, a girlfriend, so like a lot of arguments and fights Makes per sense. se. The verse and chorus are very catchy, uh, but finally, it's a song where the pre-chorus is the worst part of the song. Because <laughs> <laughs> I actually don't care about the pre-chorus at all, but the rest, the verses and chorus are good. Uh, but yeah. I'm going to move on from that one. All right. Song number five is Pacifier. Pacifier. Do you like this song? Do you remember the movie? The Pacifier with Vin Diesel? Yeah. Is that the? Did you watch it? Where yeah. he was the nanny, where he has to do a secret. I like love that movie when dance? I was a kid. Is that what yeah. he did? And at the end, there was like booby traps where yeah. he had to do his handshake he like, dance. Yeah, he had to do his handshake dance. He could throw the booby traps. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I loved that movie when I was when I was younger. I actually forgot to give this a rating. I left okay. it blank, but I recommended it. And here's I'm going to give it a on the cuff rating of, of three different beers. Spur of the moment rating. Uh, Founders Canadian Breakfast Stout. Okay. Dogfish Head. One twenty minute. And Goose Island Bourbon County brand stout. stout. I was gonna go probably, but I'll go stout. Stout. So this is my wow, favorite song so on, very on the good. album. It's, so it's like my favorite. Top tier. Yeah, this is a fantastic song. It is a very good uh, song. Here's what I said: so so Guldern catchy because mm-hmm. it really is so Guldern catchy. Yeah. Um, the song's about a girl who he's arguing with, and how essentially I'm saying your word. Uh, he he's able to get over loss and hardships really easy, and she can't understand that. Yeah. Uh, and he references getting bullied and losing his mom at a young age. I think he says like 13 and how mm. that's affected his life and how he doesn't need anybody. So he doesn't need the girl. Also, if things are going bad, he doesn't need a pacifier. Yes. Some like something to suck on in comfort, yeah. essentially yeah. pacifier. And he, yeah. at the end, he talks about that. Yeah. Uh, but there's two parts in the verse, the first verse and the second verse where he's arguing with the girl. And it's really funny because she points out something pretty important, uh, like she says he's obsessed um, yeah. with a with problem. And he said, he comes back by saying, I said she looked overdressed. She didn't like that, no. Yeah. <laughs> and so she's saying like... like she an, said, oh, please, you're obsessed. I said she looked overdressed. And so she's addressing a real problem and, no, and then he's like kind of writing it off no. to make her mad. Yeah. And then later she says, she says it's you I detest. Yeah. I said she looked overslept. Yeah. She didn't like that, no. Uh, so it's kind of like a funny way to deflect a, an actual argument to try and make somebody mad. Yeah. Because he doesn't really care. Uh, but it's super mm-hmm. catchy, and it's a really, really great song. And uh, I'd say it might be one of the first songs that's the melody and the hook is guitar-driven at the very beginning. Mm-hmm. Uh, super catchy song. I'd love to see them play this one live. This is when this is the one with the uh, one do, guitar do, part do, that you really do, like, do, right? Do, do, do. Yes. With yeah. a, it's like a delay guitar, do, 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 palm do, do, muted, do, do. when he says the, yeah. she said that I was obsessed. Yeah. Um, so listen to that song, super great. Um, so those are the three I recommended already, but yeah. I'll go through the rest, obviously. That's fine. Well, you did say before that you felt like the the first half of this album was a lot better. Yeah, I think the, the tracks are a little front, the album's front-loaded with front-loaded. better songs. Um, song number six is Hourglass. I gave it Dogfish Head 60 Minute. Still pretty that's, good, but not the best offering. Good, yeah. uh, it's acoustic-driven, which is a little different. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I actually kind of really like that melody. Dreams of you and me all the time. Yeah, but what's cool about it is the vocal melody is doubled by the guitar, so the guitar plays that same melody, and it's it's really cool. Yeah, um, and it's about strained relationships you home from the girl's myself. perspective, almost. Bring you home myself. Uh, good song, but not recommended. Song number seven is business. I gave it Yingling. I kind of liked this song a lot. Yingling because it's a good standard, well, but not my favorite. It's like a, like, like a regular, just like a regular kind of like pop rock song. It is. I want to make you my business. I want to tolerate drunk you. And which means he's trying to fall in love with someone for their good and their bad. Yeah. Like if you, if you can tolerate someone at their drunkenness and most then obnoxious. I think later, then yeah, then I really think later like in the them. song he says... I want to, well, first he, the first he says, I want to recognize drunk you. And then he says, I want to tolerate drunk you. So he wants to at least know drunk her and then tolerate. Yeah. Um, song number eight is 26. And that's right. It's not song 26. It's song number eight called 26. <laughs> and it's talking about a girl who's 26 and how she's got a lot to work on her. Or she he can't believe she's 26 and still bringing up these things or having a messy, messy relationship. Right. Um, the hooks are meh, 
I don't like the melody. It's a yeah. skipper for me. Yeah, you told me you didn't really like that song. It's not really a much. bad song. It's just, it's I just, would never pick it. Well, yeah, it was kind of like... Uh, hey, if, if this is on at a bar and it's the only option, I'll be happy. Do you know what rating I gave it? What? Budweiser. <laughs> so it makes sense, right? Yeah. It's it was, not it was bad. Kinda it's like just like lounge act for me. It's yeah. not bad. I just... I'm not going to turn it off, but I'm not going to pick it. Yeah. Um, song number nine is called Rango. Um, Rango. This is a great movie where Johnny Depp is the lizard <laughs> false hero of the town. Oh, what? What? This is a song, not the movie Rango, which is sitting over there by oh, in the yeah, corner of the room. <laughs> I know. I have the DVD Why of Rango. Uh, it's actually a really good movie, and I did not put that on my floor uh, just for this reason. I have uh, I have not seen that movie. You would like it. It's really, really? good. Yeah. I Let's watch I, it later. Whenever we could watch it later. Yeah, it's a really good movie. It got really good re- uh, reviews also. Mm. Johnny Depp plays this lizard who... Oh, that's what it was. I'm going to give away the general blurb. Oh, don't. Blurb. No, don't. Blurb you can read on the back. All right, I won't. It's kind of like a bug's life. All right, on to the next... <laughs> <laughs> um, You'll see what I mean. Um, so what I, what I thought of whenever you said Rango, mm-hmm. I thought... Rango Unchained? No. <laughs> no, no, no. Rango Unchained? <laughs> <laughs> is that what you thought of when I said Rango? No. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> That's what I thought of right now. Oh, goodness. If, La- you- if Laura Pinkerton is is listening. I doubt she is. Laura or Mallory or we, uh, Brenna. Back in, back in school, we did a... Uh, we did Scooby-Doo impressions. We did Scooby-Doo impressions. And so... We Our said, friends Laura, Mallory, yeah. and Brenna wouldn't do it. They wouldn't do it. So we said... We'll do it on Facebook on a video and then send it to you and then you guys have to do it. And they did. After that. Right? And then they did. They did. Yeah. <laughs> but it was just so funny. So but funny. anyway, I, I thought of the song Rico. Oh, by NoFX. Rico. Yeah. That whenever he said Rango, I was like, wait, isn't there a NoFX song oh, called no, Rango? No. I was like, wait, no, it's Rico. Um, but anyways, Rango song number nine, I gave Sierra Nevada because it's pretty good. Sierra Nevada? Not wait, my favorite You though. just gave it Sierra Nevada? Uh, Paleo. Oh, Paleo. Okay. Sorry. Um. Good hook at the intro that I really enjoyed. Uh, song's catchy, but not the greatest. And um, one of the things I like is there's a really cool instrumental part after the second chorus. Yeah. And the second chorus is different from the first chorus because the first chorus is like real reserved and kind of slow. Second chorus is full band and heavier. Um, but that's all, enough about that song. Song number 10 is called Sidewinder. I gave this Founders Breakfast out because I quite liked this song and it had a really different vibe from the rest of the album for me. Okay. Um, when I say that, I mean it was kind of darker. Right. Uh, darker sounding, not necessarily as happy. Uh, and thematically, it follows along with that. It's about a girl that he really likes who's hanging out with other guys that she doesn't really care about. So he's, oh, okay, he's like yeah. in conflict with that. She's like talking, when he says talking about that guy or the, the person you're mixing drinks with. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it's a really good song. I almost wanted to recommend it but there was just other songs that i liked a lot better yeah and the last song song number 11 is called tyrants tyrants i like this song i gave this uh, a rating of alpine windows up oh, nice. and alpine a is a, a brewery and windows up is one of their ipas that i really enjoy yeah and i really enjoy this song um it's got a similar feel to the last song it's almost a little darker uh, more yeah. ominous sounding um, this song's about falling for a girl after a one night stand and how that's not a good thing because she's not interested in anything more and she's kind of divisive and that's what she goes for. And yeah. she's a tyrant she's a or a tyrant. dictator yeah. per se. And she's getting what she wants and you're just subject. Um, and there's a line that they repeat over and over again near the end where tyrants help build us. Um, they won't mind throwing us away, which you're yeah. talking about that girl. Tyrants help build us, but they won't mind throwing us away. Uh, but the end of the song, really, there's like a the jam. Ending. I like the ending. Did you a know lot. it's from an EP? No, I, I only know it's because of research. Uh, they had a 2010 EP, um, and actually, I think this album came out in 2014. <clears throat> Does yeah. that sound right? 2013 or 2014. But they had an EP come out in 2010 called "The Beautiful Decay," okay. and Tyrants was on that. EP, as well as a song called, uh, what was it called? Trippin'. Trippin'. And so the outro of Tyrants on the full out length, this album that I'm reviewing, mm-hmm. is from Trippin' on the EP. So oh, okay. essentially it's almost like they took those two songs from the EP and put like... them together. But the end of this song is like a, a really good jam, and it's pretty awesome. Yeah, and these... Uh... I also researched that this was one of the first songs they ever wrote. Oh, not one of... It was the first song they ever wrote. 
and what, tyrants. Yes, and they always try to play this last at every concert. Really, which is kind of cool. That's isn't pretty it? cool. I, I like to see them live. It reminds me of Blink One Two, how Carousel was their first song, and they always try to keep it near the end of their set. Yeah, awesome. Um, it's awesome. I would. Go rec- I would recommend. Uh, if you guys want to check out one of the songs that Steve uh, recommended, which was Kathleen, right? You recommended that one? Yes, I recommended Kathleen, Cocoon, and Pacifier. I suppose I'll go over mine as well. I recommended Smells Like Teen Spirit, Lithium, Like the Battery, and Something in the Way. Like the Paul McCartney song. Something in the way. She <laughs> That's not what I it know, is. I know. What is it actually? Something in the way. What is the... Mm. What's the Paul McCartney one, though? It's not something in the way. Oh, it's, it's George Harrison something. George, what, what, are the, what are the lyrics, though? Something in the way she moves no, is it, is me. It some, is it something in the way? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. I'm 99% sure. Something what? in the way... She moves me. Yeah. Attracts me like no other lover. Uh, Let's stop gressing and and get to whatever the heck you were saying. You said one of the songs that Steve recommended, I'll recommend. Kathleen. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, There's a really good live version of it. Uh, If you just look up uh, Catfish and the Bottleman... Kathleen, live, The Current. Can we find it on YouTube? Yes. Well, well if we can't... Well, if, if we can we find can, it on YouTube, we'll post, we'll post it, it on the yeah. video. On the website. On the website, which is bruiseandtunespodcast.com. Dot com. If we can only find a link, we'll still post it, but regardless. Yeah, uh, but it's a live version in the studio of The Current, which is the, I mentioned before, the Minnesota radio station. That plays some pretty darn good music. They play current tunes, so I hear. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh, it's a rock. It's a what? <laughs> a joke. Right, very messy. Why don't we recommend albums? <laughs> okay. Um, Actually, maybe we should finish our beers first and then recommend albums. Uh, let's recommend then finish the beers for the end of the podcast. All right, sounds good. Uh, what I'm going to recommend for you is a band that I used to listen to a lot in probably middle school. Uh, and the reason why they're brought back into my... Into your life. Into my life is because I just saw them... Live. Two night, two night, three nights ago? Live. In Nashville. The band is MXPX. The album is Slowly Going the Way of the Buffalo. Now, this is a band that, like, all the other bands that you've recommended me, I have heard of. Mm-hmm. I have like never heard of this band until you re- until you were like I'm going to an MXPX show, which is kind of surprising because and I was like, who is that? I you, don't know. You you generally grew up listening to Christian bands, correct? Well, more yeah. or less. And MXPX, they're they're like a pop punk band, but they were out under Christian labels and they had Christiany songs. Like I didn't really I didn't really grow up listening to Christian music, but for some reason, I listened to MXPX just because their music was good. Yeah. Okay. So I thought you would so have listened you, to them. So I was surprised you never That's surprising, yeah. I'm surprised know. you never heard of them. I I've literally never heard of them. Like though. if you heard of Tooth and Nail, the label? I've heard of Tooth and Nail the label, like yeah. Christian label, right? Yep. That's where they were on. Oh, okay. For a while, I, I believe. Don't quote me. I could be wrong. But it makes think, sense. Yeah. You you probably could find their stuff at like the Family Christian bookstore or something. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Um Not Okay, anymore. so that what's the what what is it again? The something about a buffalo? Slowly going the way of the buffalo. MXPX. Slowly going the way of the buffalo. They're American. They don't say that. And in fact, they might actually be from Seattle, which is where Nirvana's from. Oh. Uh, I could also be wrong, but I think they're from Seattle. So keep talking, and I'll look that up to see if I'm right. correct. Well, I am going to be recommending a an album by, yet again, another non-American artist. Um, however, you already know who he is. Who, Frank Turner? No. One of his friends, though. His name is Will Varley. Will Varley, uh, huh? Will Varley, yeah. We saw him with Frank in Boston. In Boston. Um, when was that? Last year? Uh, it was this year. It was February. Oh, it wasn't. Oh, wait. Hey. It wasn't wintertime, though. We saw him yeah, in Boston. It was in February, yeah. And I actually, I, I bought one of his albums at the show, and but I it really wasn't, liked it. It wasn't the one that I'm going to recommend, though. What's the one you're recommending? Well, I'm going to recommend uh, Will Varley's album. 
Uh, I just want to get the name right. Postcards from Ursa Minor. Whatever that is. Okay, I know I know at least <laughs> one or two of the songs <laughs> on here. Whatever that is. I think he played two of the songs. Well, the first song he played live during the Boston show. Seize the Night he played also live. Yeah, that's a great song. And the Cat song. So three songs yes, he played Talking live. Talking Cat Blues. That's not funny. Uh, but yeah, he's really good uh, British folk singer. A you very... keep, you need to stop recommending non-American artists. I'm sorry. I also just confirmed that uh, MXPX is, is from a town just out like near real real close to Seattle. Mm-hmm. Music is universal, universal, bro. Sorry. Yeah, but we're not universal bruising tunes. Sorry. We're American bruising tunes. Sorry. Uh, and just for future reference, um, not next episode, but the one after is uh, the 21st yes. podcast episode. So I think it might be fun to do a themed episode. I think it will be. What I think a we should do coming is... Coming of age. We can, this podcast I wanna, can I want to recommend now. you a... Yeah, our, our podcast will be able to drink. It'll be old enough at that point in time. But I want to recommend you an album that has a good drinking song on it. Okay. And I would like to drink a beer that's maybe my first legal drink. Maybe I'll make it that. Which I won't recommend until then. That could be interesting. Do you remember what your first legal drink was? And is it something yes. you can have on the podcast? Can I have it on the podcast? Technically, yes. All right, mine's definitely not a craft beer. Do I want to have it on the podcast? No. I'm going to have mine on the podcast just to make it fun. <laughs> oh, wait. Was this my first legal drink? Or did I have this before? Jesse, we do not advocate underage drinking here on American no. Brews and Tunes. No, I definitely... No, I, w- I was of age. You better have been. Ah, who knows? But that's what we'll do. We'll plan on doing for that. That yeah, sounds good. Um, but next week, like we said, Jesse will be listening to MX Picks Slowly Going the Way of the Buffalo. And Steve will be listening to Will Varley's album, Postcards from Ursa Minor. I don't even know what Ursa Minor is. It reminds me of Ursula from what? Under the Sea. You don't know what, Under the Sea. You don't know what Ursa Minor is? No, I have no idea what that is. Uh, Ursa Minor and Ursa Major. Do you know now? I have no idea what you're talking about. Big Dipper, Little Dipper. Now I know what you mean. They're they're called Ursa Minor and Ursa Major. Do I look like a star scientist? <laughs> Cosmetologist. <laughs> it's either astrology or astronomy. I can't remember which one's which. Cosmopolitan? Is it, is it I think astronomer it's, or astrologer? It's astronomy. Astronomy? Okay. I don't know. I know the Big Dipper. I know the Little Dipper. I know Orion. Their technical names are Ursa Major, Big Dipper, because it's a bear. Does it refer to constellations? Words. Yeah, the constellations. Ursa Minor is the... Little Dipper. That's the most scientific I think our podcast has ever got. <sighs> Darn right. I'm trying to bring this into the books. <laughs> What books? <laughs> Science books? Harry Potter books? <laughs> the astronomy books. They do astrology in Harry Potter. They do tea leaf reading. Yeah. What are they, what's the and thing div- that Ron divination. gets? And divination. Divination. What's Ron getting his teacup? He gets the... The were- black dog? The, the, werf- the, werf- the black dog. <laughs> yeah. The serious black dog. <laughs> serious black dog. <laughs> <laughs> it's serious black that is. It's serious black that is. Here's another on the cover. Who's serious black? Who's serious Who's black? Serious black? That's serious black that is. <laughs> He's a murderer. He's a murderer, Airy. Oh man, the books are so much better than the movies. Oh yeah, fourth movie. Because remember, <clears throat> remember that guy who was the night bus. Uh, fourth movie was terrible. Guy, what's his name? Stan something or other. Stan McGillicuddy. That's not his last name. I have no idea. Uh, but he comes back later. They see him as a Death Eater. Remember? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But you don't know that in the movies. And the, let's not let's not no we won't get into the fourth movie. It's terrible. I like it. It's I like, so bad. I like all after, of them. After reading the book, it's it's so bad. They cut out so much and streamline it so much. Every movie, dude. But I mean, that I guess you have to do that with a movie, but just lame. You know what else is lame? Kind of like the fact that this episode has to end. That's what it was lame. Yeah, that's lame. But uh, everything's got a beginning, a middle, and an end. That's right. Just like the tail end of these beers. Mm-hmm. That has to come to an end. What do you say we uh, give a little cheers and finish our beers? Oh. Here, here's. <clears throat> Have no fears. Have no fears. It's the greatest of years. It's the greatest, yeah, the greatest oh, of years. Oh, there's an itch on my ears. <laughs> oh, I itch too hard. It's giving me tears. <laughs> <laughs> I was literally just thinking of tears, too. <laughs> Man, don't you s- give me any sneers now. Can you see the future? Are you among the Sears? <laughs> the Sears. <laughs> no, but I've been to the department store. <laughs> Did 
you get it? Yeah, I get it. I really do get it. And I can't think of any other good rhymes. <laughs> that was a terrible joke. I feel like well, my... why don't you say, let, let us shift gears. <laughs> nice. You know, nice. Nice. I'm so ugly, so are you. Broken mirrors. <laughs> hope we don't uh, <laughs> see any deer <laughs> let's let's leave this ride before it veers <laughs> oh my god oh, oh man uh, that was a rhyming grass yes it was I'm still trying to think of good ones but I can't <sighs> catch my breath I can't think of any of other ones either I'm too I'm, I'm but too oh, shibba dee but cheers <laughs> yeah, but let's, let's just uh, get on with that, Gress, and let's um, say the magic word. Yeah. My beer has been fantastic. It, once again, it is the uh, Braxton New England IPA. Super duper good. And again, mine was the Lagunitas Wilco Tango Foxtrot. Pick it up if you have, if you have a chance. It's pretty darn good. Shiba a beep Oh. <coughs> I slurped a little too much. <coughs> Patting myself on the back. <coughs> oh my god. At least that it was a good <coughs> delicious tasting oh, I cough. Like, uh, I like cough because I started laughing <coughs> at you. Once again, uh, my name has been <laughs> my name <laughs> has been has Steven. been and still is and will forevermore be Stephen Johnston. And my name has also been, but may not be in the future, what? Jesse Titus. This has been American Breeze and Tunes. Here's a theme song, you know it's not a mean song. It's a good song, just as it should song. American Breeze and Tunes. Shibbity beeba